Oh, oh hi there. Before we go any further, have you subscribed yet? No? Okay. I'll wait. <laughs> There you go. All right, let's let's begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Aaliyah C TV. Today's video is another and final extension of my Black History Month fact videos. Today's video, I will highlight the lives of three warrior African queens from way back when that are not really talked about. There's actually hundreds, but I just decided to pick three just to scratch the surface, and I challenge you to find out about more than the besides these ladies that I'm gonna to highlight today. I'm gonna to talk about Amina, the queen of Zazu, Nigeria. Candace, the empress of Ethiopia, which is actually a title, not just a name, which I'll talk about. And lastly, I'm gonna speak about Makita, the queen of Sheba. So stay tuned. So Queen Amida, Amina, my bad. She was born in 1853 and she passed in 16, I'm sorry, take that back. She was born in 1533 and passed in 1633. So she lived for exactly 100 years. She reigned for 33 of her years. She led her first combat in the first two months of her reigning and assuming power. Her objective of every battle she ever had was to conquer her neighboring um, rulers as a vessel so that she could have permits for all of her traders to have safe passage through those villages. Her family, her family's wealth was derived from the trade of leather, goods, coal and nut, which are caffeine containing fruit, which makes sodas in Africa, um, and imported metals. Um, so she refused to marry, she never wanted to, but what she would do, which is not funny, but after every battle, she would assume a temporary husband, sleep with him, and then the next morning, she would condemn him to death. She did that because she didn't want any man speaking of their sexual experiences with the queen. I mean, that's a way to do it, but girl, you could have just had a non-disclosure or something, like, it's kind of extreme. Um, let me see. So for her, oh, so for all of her armies, she was the one to introduce metal armor, iron helmets, and chain mail. I don't know what that is, for her armies. And for all of her military camps, she had them fortified with huge walls that to this day still stand. They were entitled um, later on amino barriers, amino walls, I'm sorry. But later on, those walls, inside of those walls, turned into towns and villages that sprung up in those protective barriers. The walls became known as Amina's Walls, like I just said. Just reread the notes. Um, so yeah, she was very strong-willed. She was known to be very intelligent, and she was very wealthy. And that is a short summary of Queen Amina from Nigeria. And this... The source of this information came from NigeriaGallery.com. And now I'm going to talk about Candace, the Empress of Ethiopia. So the name Candace is not actually a name. It is a title for queen or queen mothers. So that name is held in very high esteem of the queens of Kush at this time. And there were four Candaces in this time period of it's called Mero Merore M E R O E with a like a Spanish dash at the top. Um so I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. Um and these women, like I said, ruled in the African Empire of Kush, aka Nubia. There are four different war queens known as Candace in the Empire of Kush. Um, they were different from other queens because aside from other queens, these women held the power without the power of their husband. They were individually held queens and not through marriage. Their title lasted for 500 years. The Candaces set a standard of excellence and stability throughout Kush. Um, one of the four were known for losing an eye in battle, and after she passed, she was immortalized through art, um, pottery, and different statues. 
one of the queens um, are actually known for punking Alexander the Great. This was around 332 BC. Um, so he was approaching the border, but he never got there. And she rolls up on her warrior elephant, and all of her army are on warrior elephants as well. And he assesses you know, all of them, and she was like, so you trying to fight or not? So he notices the strength of her army, and he was like, no, I'm good. So he goes home. But eventually, sadly, he was able to conquer a weaker part of Egypt later on in that time period. But she wasn't going, and he wasn't ready, and he was like, no, I'm good. Um, Another cool thing about them was during the time <clears throat> they ruled over those 500 years, Kush thrived and was known for never in that whole 500 years being ruled by a male, strictly women, Candaces. And if you want to, you can reference, um, you can see a reference of them in the Bible on Acts chapter 8, verses 27 through 39. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, check it out. So, yes, that is a short summary of the warrior queens of the kingdom Kush. There's also another source um, for the Candace, the Empress of uh, Ethiopia, in the book called The Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. If you want to read more in depth about this story, um, that's another source for you. Moving along, last but not least, the Queen of Sheba. She was known for her big pilgrimage to uh, visit King of Solomon to find out if this man was as wise as everybody was saying he was. She really wanted to figure out what the hype was about. So she went down there prepared to ask him the toughest questions that she could think of. She was just trying to test this man to see like, what's up? Is he really this wise or whatever? So with her, if he could prove to her he was as wise as he was put out to be, she brought with her 7,200 pounds of gold, spices on multiple camels, and she brought fine jewels with her as well for gifts if he showed himself worthy of his wisdom. So she asked him hella questions and he kept answering. He got everything right. He spewed wisdom and intelligence and she was kind of blown away. And she was known to be a very smart, wealthy woman herself. So he, after she tested him, asked her, you know, um, you know, I, you asked me everything you wanted to now I kind of want to get to know you a little bit more and so they went and hung out and he gave her everything she desired and shortly when she got back home to her kingdom she found herself pregnant with his son um, and his name was King Malek spelled M-E-N-E-L-I-K and that is that story I couldn't find much on her I know that there's way more than her to her than the visit to King Solomon and her son that was born from the situation, but it was hard for me to find anything. So if you guys can find more, let me know. But I do know she was just known to be very smart and wealthy. I'm sure some wars or something is a part of that history as well, but I could not find it. So that is all I have for you guys. Um, to give you a recap, I spoke about Amina, the queen of Zazu, Nigeria. I spoke about Candace's the empresses of Ethiopia and lastly I spoke about Makita the Queen of Sheba so yeah oh you also can find a reference you can really find the whole story of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba in 1st Kings chapter 10 I read it it gave me a little bit more insight than what I gave you guys but yeah if you want to check it out feel free so I hope you all learned something from this video and that wraps up my series for black history facts I kind of had a lot of fun doing this so I might drop a history fact black history fact video once a month that way it'll help motivate me to continue my research but let me know if you like these type of videos and if you feel I should continue which I'll probably do anyway even if you don't want me to so <laughs> yes thank you guys for viewing and I hope you learned something today don't forget to subscribe to your girl's channel and peace and love. Bye.